Hello world, have you ever wanted to learn how to use Python's datetime module? Well, if you have, you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to cover everything that you need to learn as a new programmer, budding data scientist, or maybe even future algo trader. So, what are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to start off easy. First, we're going to learn how to import datetime and also install and import PyDZ, which we'll use to make our time, uh, time zone aware. Second, we'll then cover creating moments in time, including dates, times, and date times, and then understand the difference between those three. Third, we're going to then create time deltas, which are durations in time, which we typically use to add or subtract from moments in time, such as, you know, two days from yesterday. And then after we have an understanding of both times and time deltas, we're going to look at the various attributes of both, and you'll see why when we cover this in the uh, Jupyter Notebook. And then finally, we'll wrap up how to make our data time zone aware using PyTZ. So I hope you're as excited as I am. Let's go ahead and create some code. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that we have our virtual environment activated. If you're not sure what a virtual environment is, that's okay. You can check this video in the card right here, which will show you how to install and activate a virtual environment. But assuming you have a virtual environment activated, the first thing that we're going to want to do is install ITZ into that virtual environment. You can do that by typing bang pip, which bang just allows you to run any command pip install ITZ. If you're running this from the command line, you won't need the bang. And you hit enter. And notice I already have this requirement satisfied. If you haven't had PyTZ installed yet, it, you'd get a different message. Now we can delete that and we can now grab the imports that we need for this lesson. We'll do import date time and import PyTZ and then hit enter. We're going to create some headings so that way I can upload this Jupyter notebook uh, with some comments. So that way you can either follow along with this video or follow along on your own time uh, to go ahead and learn how to do this stuff. So we'll do create dates, times, and date times. And then we'll create a date. A date equals date time, which is the module name. And this can get a little confusing because there's both date time dot date, date time dot date time, and date dot time, but I'll cover that as we go. So we'll create a new date with the year 930, which was the original version of this blog article, which is now being turned into a YouTube video because it makes more sense. And then we'll just type date here. And we can see that we've created a date time dot date. When we print it, we'll actually get a different output. It might be more, I guess, uh, common, a common <laughs> way to see this date. And we see 2019, 930. A pretty tough explanatory there. And now we can also create a time. A uh, time is simply, uh, you know, obviously you can think of a date. Time is just an hour of the day. So we'll just do time equals date time. Time. And we'll do six. 30, about nine seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, which will be the milliseconds. We can do the same thing with print time. We can see six, 30, nine seconds, and then here's our milliseconds. And then a date time is simply the same thing um, as date and time just added together. So we'll do DT, so that way we don't overwrite the name of our date time module, right? So if I said <laughs> date time, equals, and you can see up here we've imported date time, so that would cause us some problems. We'll just do dt equals date time, date time. And that seems a little funky at first because you're, you know, you're calling date time from date time, but that's just how it is. And then we can just do the same exact thing in this case. We'll do the date will be uh, 2019, 930, and then we'll do the time will be 6, 30, 9 seconds, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, no specific reason why. And I'll print dt, and we can see now we have both the date and the time component. So again, a date is just, you know, a date and time. A time is just the hour of day, and a date time is the same thing, only combined. And they are, as we'll see, different types. So watch this. We'll do type date. It's a date time date. Type time. We can see it's a date time time. And type dt. We can see that's a date time. So just be aware that those are different types. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and see if we can get the current day and time. Now getting the current date uh, is pretty easy. We can simply go or type today equals date time date today. And we should know already that today is a date and will not have a time component, as we can see there. 
And we can do the same thing for now, which will be date time date now. Oh no, date time <laughs> date time now. Right, and you, you should have caught that error almost immediately because you know now has a time component, so we need to use date time, not date. So we'll print now, and we can see that uh, we now have the time component. So that's the current time, five oh one. And we don't just have to create date times by entering in the you know integer values and you know calling today or now. We can also create date times and times from strings. Um, and that's actually a very common method. So we'll, we'll do that now. But first, let's create a date time string. So we'll type date time string equals, let's see, 10, 10, 20, 21, say 137, right? And you can see that's just sort of an arbitrary uh, string. We can parse it, parse time equals date time date time, strp time. So that's the key, right? So we're using date time because we are dealing with times and dates at date time, right? So we need to use the date time from date time. And then we parse the string. So there's a p. There's all right here. There's also strf time, which takes times and formats it into a string. But just wanted to make sure you understand the key distinction is there's a p which it parses times and an f which formats times and then we uh, just use the uh, format code which i'll show you in a second we'll just do percent m for month and d for day percent y and then percent x and then see what did i do there oh that would be it that'd be y so i need to I really butchered that. All right, date time string. Okay, perfect. So now what we're doing is we're calling this strp time or parse time for this string, right, using this format code, right? So month here, day, year, and time. And we can actually see the list of these, right? So we can actually get pretty complex and we will in a second, but you can see there's there's a lot of them. So we can see that I use percent %x, which is the locale's appropriate time representation, right? Or I could have done any any number of other options. So let's actually do one that's a little more complex. We'll just call it uh, date time string again. It's going to be Thursday, December 20, 21 at 1.37 p.m. And we'll just call this more complex. Date time, date time, strp time, because we're parsing. Do the date time string, and I'll create a new row here, uh, simply our carriage returns to give us a little more room. Then a, comma, b, nope, d, and a two letter here, i, m, and p. Hopefully, I got that right. We'll do print type more complex, which should now be a uh, date time and print more complex. And then hit enter. And then we can see now it is now a date time. We converted that from this more complicated string and then printed more complex to show that you know it is now a date time. And really it's it's not complex, it's just understanding um, and tracking down how the format is and making sure that you know, you don't forget this comma here because there is a comma in this uh, this string. So just understanding how those format strings work. Now that we understand how to create moments in time, we either, either directly or using a method such as today or now, or by parsing a complicated string, now let's figure out how to create durations in time or time deltas, right? So I'll just do create time delta, and we can either import from date time, import time delta, uh, which we will do, or you can just call it from date time. So we'll see both methods. So days delta equals date time dot time delta, and we'll do days equal five, which means five days in the future. So if I, the future equals now plus days delta, what do we get? Well, we know that now 
is the 20th, and we know five days from now will be the 25th, right? So this will actually give us uh, you know, Christmas or 1225 uh, where I'm located. Now, that's uh, in the future. We could have easily uh, gone in the past, right? I'll do past. And that would have been the 15th or five days ago. But we don't just have to work with days. We can work with things that are much more granular. So we'll just do all delta. <laughs> You'll see why I call it all, all delta in a second. We'll do time delta because we don't need to use, you know, uh, date time dot time delta because we've already imported a time delta from this module. So let's go ahead and do days equal one, seconds equal one, milliseconds equal one. You get the idea. Minutes equal one, hours equal one, type, and then weeks equal one, and then we'll go ahead and type out all delta and see what we see here. So we can see that it figured it out automatically for us, right? Uh, we know the days is eight, as weeks is one, plus one day, right? The second that figured it out, and then the microseconds um, also. So that's, you know, so even though we adjusted all of these, it actually, um, you know, aggregates it, uh, so to speak. So anyways, let's see what happens now when we add this to now. So we'll do future equals now plus all delta, and then future, we can see that it's the 28th that, you know, that time. So we pushed everything forward by uh, one, essentially. And that's pretty, pretty much it from a time delta perspective. Um, just understand that you don't, even in the most common way, is to have a time delta, and then subtract or add that from a moment, you can actually also um, subtract and add time deltas from time delta. So we'll do days delta minus uh, all delta, and you'll see that now we have uh, the sum of those, and then we could also then go in you know, the past, so to speak, right? So just be aware that even though the most common method uh, is to subtract the time delta from uh, you know, date time, you can also subtract um, deltas, right? Time deltas from one or another, or add them, etc. So now that we understand how to work with time deltas, they're pretty easy. Let's figure out and understand how we can access the date time attributes. So now let's take a look at some of the attributes that we can potentially use, and I'll explain why we use them and give you some concrete examples. But first, let's create the heading. So accessing attributes. Okay, now you can go to um, the documentation and you can see the class attributes or the instant, uh, instance attributes right here. Uh, you can also uh, use DIR. So we'll do DIR on now, and you can see all of the uh, you know, methods and you know, class attributes and instant attributes and everything right here, right? So let's just think about what we want from this. Uh, now let's just say we want to grab the year. And this is a common pattern whenever, let's say you want to download a bunch of stock data, well, you, you might want to separate the data into months or, or whatever. Uh, that's something that, that I did where you had to use year, month, you know, et cetera. And also, uh, you know, there's also these uh, class attributes for minimum and maximum, which are the minimum and maximum dates that you can have. So if you want to download all of the stock data and you don't give a specific date, but that, you know, maybe that's required, you can use the minimum and maximum to get all you know, the dates between, you know, two, two points. Um, granted, you probably don't want to have to loop through all that, but just to give you an example. The same thing is also true for uh, time deltas. We can just do all delta, and let's just say days, right, or second. But if we're curious on where uh, to get those, you can either go to the documentation or just do DIR all delta, and you'll see the same thing with all the various methods, attributes, etc. So the accessing those attributes are pretty key uh, for various programming uh, tasks, such as you know the aforementioned, you know, splitting the data up into monthly uh, segments. 
And then we're in the home stretch. We'll create a new cell for adding time zone. And time zones are pretty conceptually easy to understand. And they're, you know, all of this stuff is, I would say it's easier. You just have to do it a few times to get comfortable with it. So we haven't been using time zones so far. And we can see that by saying now dot easy info equals none, which is true because no time zone info has been set. Uh, but if we want to set a time zone, we can do it multiple ways. We can actually say now equals uh, date time, date time now, and then pass it a time zone, pi tv utc, and then we can print now. And if you're working with stock market data, uh, it's almost always advisable to use the utc time. Um, but again, um, sometimes you have to work with various time zones or different programming, uh, you know, pass require time zone usage and you have to set that time zone. So anyways, point is simple to add UTC. But as we know, we can also create date times. So we'll do date time equals date time, date time 2021, 10, 10. We'll do, let's see, uh, 9, 36, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this time, you know, we'll just add TZ info and pi TZ UTC. Pi TZ UTC. And then I'll print ET UTC and see what happens there. Perfect. Okay. So we can see that um, we now have, you know, no offset here, right? But we do have the time zone data available. And if you actually just um, leave this without UTC, you can actually see the TZ info is now added to this uh, date time object. Now, one thing is you're saying, well, this is great, Leo, but I'm in the Eastern time zone and I want to add this to my uh, time. That's pretty easy to do. There's a multiple ways you could do it. You could add it up here, you could add it here, or you can actually replace. And that's what we'll do now. So we'll do the print now, right? That'll be better, right? Print now. So we have the now. And then uh, now equals date time, date time, now. But this time, what we're going to do is we're going to replace, and we'll do TZ info equals pi TZ time zone. And this time we can add a time zone. We'll do America, New York is my time zone. And then we'll print now. Okay, and now we can see, well, that's a lot of nows, <laughs> that the time zone has indeed changed. Before it was 2244. Right, and now we can see that we do have uh, an offset here, right? So that's um, that's interesting. So you might say, Leo, how do I, you know, that's great, but how do I find my time zone? How do I get a list of time zones? Well, you can either type in pi TV and type in common time zones for the most commonly used time zones, or if uh, you have a location that's not in there, you can do all time zones, and that will give you every uh, single time zone. And that's it. See, that wasn't so bad. Hopefully I accomplished my goal of helping you get that much further in your Python programming journey. If I did, please give this video a like and maybe even subscribe to the channel. It lets the Google algorithm know that this is a video worth sharing. And if you're interested in time series analysis, which is a probable next step, you can go ahead and check out this series here where I cover pretty much everything you need to go from start to finish regarding understanding and analyzing a time series. So hopefully you enjoyed and maybe I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.